Now, brilliant. <laughs> um, right, where were we? <laughs> okay, let's say a bit more about sharks. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let me find my PowerPoint again. All right, so we're talking about elasmobranchs. So elasmobranchs um, are characterized, so some of the things they have in common are that they all have gills. So they have either five or seven gills, between five and seven gills that they use to get oxygen from the water. Are you still there? You, I think you've frozen. Oh, no, I haven't frozen. Back now. <laughs> um, and they use these to get oxygen from the water. So they don't need to come to the surface of the water like mammals do to breathe, like dolphins or whales do. Yeah. Um, and they have skeletons that are made of cartilage. So if you feel your ear, can you feel how flexible it is? Yours is under your yeah. headphone, isn't it? So their skeletons yeah. aren't made from bone, um, which is more rigid. They're made from cartilage, which is more flexible. And it means they can basically swim much more flexibly and hydrodynamically through the water. So they're much more cool. efficient, which is pretty cool. It also means yeah. that it's very rare to find a fossil of a shark or a manta ray um, because the cartilage disintegrates over time. Um, you can't find skeletons like you can with dinosaurs, for example. Um, so a lot of what we know about sharks from a long time ago comes from their teeth. So usually we can just find their teeth and then we have to guess at what their body would look like depending on what their teeth shape is. Isn't that funny? I think she's frozen there again, Flossie, oh. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, one second there. I'm sure she'd be back with us. I think her mother's trying to connect too. Oh, cool. Yeah. How do you say your name? Uh, Anya. Anya. Yeah. Okay. Very I nice. thought you were a girl because I don't know any Irish names. Oh, no, 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 I can surprise people. I think it's a unisex name. I'm not, I think. Uh. I'm not sure. Aina. Yeah. That's a cool name. Yeah, it's a nice name. I'm, I thank my mother every yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys based? In uh, I'm, in, I'm in Waterford, uh, but I'm going to UCC at the moment. So. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, it's not bad. Very nice. I actually think she's after dropping out altogether here. Oh. Um, that's not good. Are, are I you wish she's bad enough. Are you based <laughs> where in, um, what you call it, England? Right now I'm in England, in Kent, in the south. Okay, very nice. Um, but yeah, I'll be here for a few months or until this all passes, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then back to the mm. Sounds like the dream to go <laughs> so back So I'm working from home. But... Sorry? It sounds like the dream to go back there. Yeah, it is nice there. It's really nice, but I live on a resort and it's a very small community. Like I've been there a few years now and it does get a bit strange. Like I feel like I don't have much of a life, but yeah. um, I love the job. So for now, it's definitely worth it. Ah, well, like, you know, you're, you're doing cool stuff. And yeah, I'm that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Quite jealous, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> you should come out to the Maldives. Uh, I'd love to. Uh, had I money, I'd be out there in the morning. But <laughs> what what do you what are you focused on? What are you interested in? Uh, I'm doing a lot of work on porpoises and dolphins at the moment. Oh, so that's, that's nice. it's fun, but it's a dissertation yeah. and need to get through it. <laughs> is it masters? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So okay. cool. Uh, but. I think once I finish my master's, I, I try and get out of Ireland for a while. I'm thinking yeah. of Canada, but I'm not sure. Canada would be amazing. Yeah. 
I want to do Canada as well. Oh, well, you've got the Maldives. Uh, I wouldn't wouldn't swap that. (laughs) Stop. Hold on one second. Has she gone all together? Is she? I don't know. Has she emailed? Uh, She hasn't. Hold on. Hmm. Um, I'll just, I'll shoot them a quick email. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, how long have you been out in the Maldives? About three years since I first went out, but I've had a few different length contracts. So I've had a few sort of stints in the middle. Like I had three months in Australia, just traveling and a few months back here. Um, but I've, I've just signed a new one year contract, but obviously now I'd be here for a month. Um, but yeah, it's a nice life. Okay. Oh, we have- Hello. Hey. Hello. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. My iPad went weird. Ah, are you back with us? Um, uh, um, yeah, my iPad went a bit weird. Can you see the present uh, any chance, Samantha or Bonnie? I think you. I think you're frozen. I think oh, we're our faces. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Can you see the, the screen? Can you see the the big presentation coming up? Oh yeah, I can see it now. My iPad oh. went really weird. I don't know what it did. <laughs> That's all right. We'll forgive you. No yeah. You just shout if you if we start cracking up or if you can't hear me properly, okay? Okay. Okay. Good to go. Okay. So, thought I'd tell you about one of the ways that we can research sharks, seeing as you already know quite a lot about them and their biology and ecology. So this is what we call a remote underwater video camera and it's basically a camera in the middle attached to like a cage that lies on the seabed and it has a little cage on it that has fish inside so it has bait inside to attract sharks and this camera is put under the ocean and it's left to film for like some maybe five hours or, or a few hours and the humans will go back to the boat and they'll leave it alone and they'll see at the end which sharks have come to visit the, the camera and the bait or the fish. Cool. And that helps us to understand which sharks are in an area because sharks are actually usually really, really shy. So it's really hard to see them. Um, and if you do see one, usually as soon as it sees you, it's like, and it swims away as fast as it can because they're actually a bit scared of us. Um, so this is a good way to know what kind of sharks live in an area without having yeah. to chase them or or hurt them to find out, or fish them, or do anything like that. Now here are a few of the different sharks that we can see on these cameras in the Maldives. So do you know what any of these are called? I know you know what one of them is. Is she gone? Hello? They look nurse sharks. Yeah, nurse sharks, well done. So the top left no, is nurse uh, sharks. Oh, um, I can't hear you. Oh. Um. <laughs> that one with the black tip on its fin, the black tip reef shark. Yep. And the one on the bottom right, that has a tip on its fin as well that will give it away what it's called. You can have a guess. There we go, I don't know what happened. Can you hear us? Am I on audio? Yeah, I can hear you. I don't I just don't know if you can hear me. We can hear yeah. you. We can hear you. Okay, that's good. Perfect. All right, so that one on the bottom right is called a white tip reef shark. So it's quite easy to guess because it has that white tip on its fin. And it lives kind of similar to the black tip, but it's much skinnier um, and it has slightly different habits. 
And this one in the top right, now this is a bit of a tricky one, but if you look at its body, can you see a stripy pattern on it? Do you know any stripy sharks? Yeah. What's the stripy shark called? Tiger shark? Yeah, so this is actually a juvenile tiger shark, so quite a young tiger shark. And this is, I think, one of the first times they were seen in the Maldives when they put the bait out for them to have a look at them. So it's really cool for us to see these unusual sharks using these cameras. Now we can also yeah. do this with manta rays. So what we do a lot of the time is we put cameras underwater on a manta ray cleaning station, which is where a manta goes to get um, its, its skin cleaned by little fish that will pick bits of food off yeah. of its skin. Um, we put these GoPros underwater with a weight on them so that they stay down and they film for about three or four hours yeah. and we get some really cool footage. Your line's a bit um, cracker there. Oh, okay. can you see the video? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> can you see it? I don't know if she can, but I'm really enjoying this. This is <laughs> good. Uh, oh, she's, gone, oh, she's gone. Oh, oh, oh no. no. That's incredible, Flossie. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, this is a compilation, obviously, but it's really cool. We get some really cool clips from these videos. We put I was saying that, that that's not a compilation. That is genuinely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine. <laughs> Just everything. <laughs> <laughs> this is going mental out there. That's yeah. insane. I think she's. Are you there? Hello. Hey. Hello. Yeah. Our Wi Fi is really bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's a sad. Yeah. If you want, you could just ask us some questions if you have any questions to ask, or do you want to keep doing the presentation? It's up to you. Oh, I don't know if she's still there. No, I think the Wi-Fi's got really bad, obviously. I'm still here, I just can't hear you. Oh. Okay. Try emailing them. No, I'm trying to get on with this one, but it's not working. Hi, I'm here. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, um, it just keeps on going in and out of... Um, Heaviness. <laughs> oh dear. That's sad. Yeah. Um, we went off my iPad because it just wasn't working. So I'm on my mum's phone now. Okay. Which also isn't Which also isn't working. Oh, no. Yeah. <sighs> what can I do? Am I no I'm not muted? There's another person joining in here now. Right, so we're trying to get in on my on my computer now. Yeah, we're trying to get we're trying to um get in on my mum's computer. Cool. I tell you what, Ooh, while you're so doing that, that looks I can good. Put on the kettle first. Can you hear them? Now? Come back. One sec. Um, join this computer audio. Yeah, let's join the computer audio. Go on then. Join. Okay. <clears throat> we are using computer audio. Can we hear them? Can okay. you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Ah. <laughs> Start video. No, no, not that video. Um, oh. Yeah, we are... Tr uh, Hello? Is she still there by any chance? No? She came on and then cracked up. Oh no, it's such a pity. Oh. Yeah. Well, she might be joining here. Oh. Oh. Hello? Moment of truth. I went off uh, down to my room while it was boiling the kettle. 
uh, and I got this because I found it on the beach yesterday and I was like that's so cool it's a cuttlefish beak right yeah it's a cuttlebone I, oh, I've never god. seen it before and I was like oh my god this is amazing that's <laughs> really cool that's so, awesome yeah I didn't get that what was it is she back? Oh, she's muted herself. No, wait one sec. I can unmute her. Oh. You have the power. Is it working? Hello? Um, we are unmuted. Why um, don't you try these headphones? Yeah, let's try them. Right. Can you hear me? Okay. Right. That's working far better now. Oh. I can hear you. Okay, very good. I can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. I can hear you too. Yeah. I can hear you too. Brilliant. Awesome. Uh, All right. So Carry on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, with her. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was just yeah, showing yeah. you a cool video we got of the manta ray cleaning station. So we get these videos every day from different areas of coral reef where mantas go to get clean. So you can see all these little tiny fish under the manta's belly and they're actually eating little bits of food and parasites off the manta's skin and helping it to get clean. Um, so this is a relationship that the fish and the manta rays have. And we watch these videos and we count how many mantas we see. Yeah. We count how long they were there for. We have a look at any other cool animals we can find. So this one, what do you think that animal was that just went past? Uh, oh, oh, sea turtle. turtle. Very good. Yeah, yeah, well done. So we can see some other cool animals. All right, so that's one of the ways, let's see, that we can research the mantas and the sharks. Now, mantas and sharks are threatened. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. me what sharks are threatened by? I'm sure you know some of the things they might be threatened by. Bonnie, do you know what sharks are threatened by? Still there? Well, I'm back. Oh, good. Well, I'm back. I don't know what happened. I don't. Yep, I'm still there. Awesome. So there's some big. Oh, you're back on screen. Fantastic. Cool. Connectivity yeah. problems, eh? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, this is going well now. Oh no. No, please don't do this to me, computer. We can still, I think we still might be able to hear you, but I don't know if the connection is there for you on the opposite side. Yeah, can you hear us? Oh no, I think that's, I think that's dead. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's not looking good. Oh! Hello! Oh, hello! hello. <laughs> hey! I, I changed my Wi-Fi. Changed my Wi-Fi. Uh -huh. So it should work now. So it should work now. Awesome! It sounds a bit better, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just asking if you know any of the threats to sharks, any of the things that are happening to them. Um, well, um, well, people, people are catching, catching, um, cutting off their fins to make shark fin soup. Mm -hmm. Yep, very good. And anything yeah. else? Um, well, they're getting caught in fishing nets. Yeah, very good. Yeah. And do you know, so actually those are the two that I was going to talk about, but I think you already know a bit about them. So... This is what we call bycatch. That's when sharks get caught in fishing nets that aren't intended to catch sharks. They're, they're meant to catch things like tunas or other fishes. And sharks, a lot of sharks have to keep swimming forward in order to get oxygen and to breathe. Yeah. So if they get caught in a fishing net, then they can't actually 
get themselves out and they can't stay alive for very long because they can't breathe if they're not swimming. So they yeah. actually will die. Um, yeah. And as you said, lots of sharks are being caught for their fins, which is used for this shark fin soup. There's a picture in the top corner. Mm. But do you know roughly how many sharks are caught in these fishing nets every year? First, can you guess the numbers of the sharks caught in fishing nets? 100. It's actually shocking. Yeah. It is 50 million every year. Whoa. It's a crazy. I can't even imagine like what 50 million sharks looks like. It's insane. And what about shark fin soup? How many do you think are estimated to be caught every year to make shark fin soup? Probably more than 50 million. Yeah, that's right. What do you think? Uh, 70 million? So, it's estimated around 100 million, but that's just an estimate. So it could be more like 70 or it could be more like 150. We're not really sure, but still it's a huge, huge, huge number of sharks every year. So it's yeah. a really big problem that's making their populations go down. Um, Luckily, some countries have protected sharks. So the Maldives has protected sharks across the whole of the Maldives waters. Um, and that's because they get so much money and fame from having tourists come to swim with sharks and scuba divers come to swim with sharks. So they want to keep these tourists coming. Um, so they yeah. protected the sharks. It's pretty good. Now, one of the reasons sharks are so threatened is because for a long time, a lot of people thought that they were just mindless killing machines, that they wanted to eat every human being in sight and that they had to be killed. Um, and we shouldn't really care if people fished them because they just were going to hurt us anyway. And I think you yeah. probably know this isn't true, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. But maybe we can do this little quiz. So can you have a go at listing these items in order of which are the most dangerous to humans? So which one do you think is the most dangerous to humans? I'm going to say cars. Cars, okay. And what about after cars? I'm going to say mosquitoes. Cars, mosquitoes, and then what? After I'm going to say other humans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then sharks. Sharks. Then cows. Okay, you're pretty good at this, I have to say. Cars, number one. Mosquitoes, number two. Other humans, number three. Now, the only one you got wrong, <coughs> cows comes next. So actually, in America, about 23 people die every year just from being trodden on by cows. So it's crazy numbers. And what about sharks? How many people do you think on average die every year from shark attacks or shark incidents? What do you think? 10. 10? It's around six or seven every year on average. It changes every year, but it's a very, very, very small number. So actually, most shark attacks occur in a few places in the world. So in South Africa, in North America, and in Australia and New Zealand. And most of the time, it's either a case of mistaken identity or the shark is just trying to figure out what something is. So sharks don't have hands like us. They use their mouths to sense things. Um, and unfortunately, if they do sense something with their mouth, they can cause a big injury. But sharks definitely don't want to eat humans because otherwise a lot more humans would be eaten every year yeah. because there's sharks in a lot of places where humans swim. So as I'm sure you know, and your mom said you were interesting in, in sort of making people aware that sharks aren't as evil as we think they are, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah? And yeah. she said that you wanted to tell people about how important they are as well. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah? Do you talk to yeah. your friends and family about it? Yeah. My friend really likes sharks as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You can tell her about the numbers you just learned about. Yeah. I think we should fight Steven Spielberg for giving them a bad name, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Like Steven Spielberg's a bad guy. He was just like, oh, great white sharks, they kill everyone. When they, they don't. Yeah. Jaws yeah. ruined everything. Mm. Yeah. Good. Have you seen Jaws? No, I haven't seen Jaws, no. but my mum has. Okay. 
Yeah. It is quite scary. And, and like, paint sharks is completely the hmm. wrong kind of thing. It's like, she knows sharks aren't killing machines, but she can't help being scared of them because she's seen it. Very scared of them. Very scared. <laughs> well, it is good to respect sharks. So they are, yeah. they are big predators, just like lions. So we yeah. wouldn't want to go into a lion's den without mm-hmm. understanding lions. So not many people in the world will swim with a great white shark without a cage. There's just a few people. And those people usually know what the shark's behavior means. So if they move their pectoral fins in a certain way, it means that they are feeling like territorial and a bit aggressive so then they'll know to back off the shark so it's only if you have this really specialist knowledge that you can swim with big sharks but most sharks aren't bothered and actually they're scared by you yeah yeah i swam with a a white tip reef shark a black tip reef shark once uh, in australia on the ningaloo reef actually yeah Uh, and it was beautiful but it 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 wasn't very big it was a baby one did you feel scared did you feel scared? No. 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 I can't hear what's in there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good shark to start off swimming with. Um, I swam with a, t- a couple of tiger sharks and a bull shark on the Ningaloo Reef. And I respected them. And I don't think I'd have wanted to be right next to them. But I didn't feel threatened by them at any time. So you can tell your mum that she would be nice and safe there with even bigger sharks. Yeah. Bonnie, you're actually coming up to a good time of your swim with sharks in our waters, in British and Irish waters, oh. because summertime brings in huge amounts of basking sharks. Oh. Uh, my brother was um, on the western coast of Ireland last year, and he went to a beach with his friends, and he had only stepped into the water when, lo and behold, what came along with this massive basking shark. And it was just swimming around the place and it didn't bother him in the slightest. So this That's is a great so time cool. of year to be able to go off and see some basking yeah. sharks. That's really cool. Them. So now oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever heard of anyone seeing one near the Isle of Wight, Bunny? No, I don't no. think I have. There's definitely some around Cornwall, so there might be some around there. Yeah. Um, but yeah very cool animals i think you have some cool things to swim with up ahead of you mm-hmm. yeah um okay so a little bit about different types of rays um there's loads of different types of rays and most of them live close to the sea floor so they feed in the sand um, and they have mouths on the bottom of their bodies so that they can feed in the sand and there's some quite cool different species so we have skates We have this one which is called a spotted eagle ray and it's really pretty. It's like dark blue on top with white spots all over it. Have stingrays that have the stinging barb on their tails. This one is really cool. It's called a guitar fish because if you look at it from above, it kind of looks like a guitar Um, and it looks like more of a shark, but it's actually a type of ray. Mm. And you have the electric ray, which can actually send where's my label send um give you a little bit of an electric shock i've never seen one of these but they do occasionally get seen in the maldives cool very cool now mantas are slightly different because they've actually evolved to live in the open water so they don't need to be close to the sea floor and mantas have a mouth that's at the front of their body rather than underneath their body and that's because of what they feed on so do you have any idea what a manta eats yeah well done so it eats zooplankton which is basically animal plankton it's like little animals that live in the water now mantas can get to be the ones that we study so there's two species and the ones that i study are called reef mantas and they can get to be four meters from one wingtip to the other so that's probably if you stretch your arms out maybe two or three times that stretch out that you've done, so Whoa. really massive. But the mantas don't have a stinger on their tails, so they're not dangerous, but they do have a really cool thing on their bellies, which we call their unique spot pattern. So just like all human beings have different fingerprints, yeah. all different manta rays have different spots on their bellies. So can you see on the bottom left, there's one with three spots between its gills. 
Yeah. And then this one with lots of spots, lots of spots, two spots. And this big picture is one called Mr. Spotty. And he's our spottiest manta in the whole of the Maldives. And we see him all the time and he's very friendly. So we love Mr. Spotty very much. <laughs> so what we do in the Maldives is we go out on a research boat every day. So we go out on a boat and we go around different areas in the ocean where we might find mantas and they might be getting cleaned like that video I showed you or yeah. they might be feeding so they might be eating lots of plankton and when we see a manta we um, take pictures of its belly and when we take pictures of its belly we can identify which manta it is and we go back to our office to our computer and we have um, a whole catalog of almost 5,000 different mantas with different bellies and different names and we compare it to the mantas in the catalogue and we can see who it is. And cool. we can use that information over time to understand where the mantas are going and how often they're moving and how often they're pregnant and do lots of research and get lots of information like this. So this is one of the ways that you can study wildlife as a marine biologist. Yeah. I think that sounds cool. Yeah, I'm gonna leave you with my one for two seconds because I need to go to the toilet. Mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I was you, Nazi, um, the um, the video that you had of the cleaning station, it looked like one of the manta rays did a backflip. Yeah. That's something that they do very often. No, but sometimes when they get like a little, a cleaner fish can sometimes bite them too hard and then they get a bit of a shock and they'll do like a little leap forward and then that was actually Mr. Spotty, the one that did the backflip. Um, <laughs> and it was super funny when we saw, when we looked at the footage and we saw him doing this. Um, I'll turn the sound off. But yeah, sometimes we'll see them doing really funny things on, on our videos. Um, sometimes we get courtship trains where there's loads of males chasing a female and then they'll do loads of like backflips and all sorts of things as well. Wow. So they're really cool funny animals <laughs> they're very interesting yeah i saw one in um and some, oh. indonesia when i was uh backpacking through oh. india and um i saw them jumping off yeah. of flores yeah yeah oh yeah i went there as well it's amazing there <laughs> there, he goes. Yeah. there he goes there he goes that was amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> So that's Mr. Spotty. He's our spottiest manta in all of the Maldives. Wow. See what Are you, here he's doing a little backflip. But they will actually also backflip to feed, but he's not feeding there. Um, but they can do feeding where they just do backwards somersault after backwards somersault in a row. It's really cool. Do they do them to, is it like a courtship mating uh, thing as well, the backflip? Yeah, or? sometimes. Yeah, sometimes they will do them during mating. That one, they're just having a nice clean um, from some cleaner fish. Cool. Um, but yeah, they will do them during mating sometimes. Well, I've got to give you back to Bonnie now because she's tickling the back of my head. So okay. come back. Can I just say thank you so much, guys, for this because it's been awesome. She, It's just a fabulous opportunity for oh, us. So I'm saying thank you now on behalf of both of us. No, it's brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant thing that you do. It's really good. So I'll give you back to Bonnie. I'll carry on with my soup. I'm cooking soup in the background. Ooh, yummy. So, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. All right. I was just going to see if you can be a little manta researcher for a day. So what we have to do is look for differences between pictures of mantas. So I want you to see if you can spot some differences between these two pictures. Okay, um, so the one's got uh, um, two spots there, like um, sort of at the top, and yep. then that has them. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, that's got like a group of three spots, and that's got a group of sort of like five spots. Yep, no, yep. so now let's look at something other than the spots, because we've got the spots. Well done. Um, That one so I don't know I don't know if it's just my computer screen or not, but that one sort of got like a triangular scar on yeah. one of its wings and that one that's has That's really good. So that's what we call a reproductive wound. And when the mantas reproduce, the male manta will bite down on the female manta's wing 
and that's the the scar left by the male mantis teeth actually so that's wow. a really good spot there might be some fish as well in one of them can you see any fish i am looking very hard mom do you know where my glasses are <laughs> I can't even see the fish. And this year, oh. the rays. There's two <laughs> fish on one of the rays bellies. Oh, I can see the two fish. They're can there. See? So these yeah. are called sucker fish or remora fish. Have you ever heard of remora fish? Yes, I have. Yeah. Do you know what they are? What they do to big animals? Um. Yeah. Don't they like hold on to big animals and then wherever they go, they like get the food? Yeah. That's really good. Well done. You know so much. It's really great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are remora fish. So they're sticking onto the manta and getting a free ride. Now, one of them also has a little bite out of its wing. So have a good look. It's a bit hard to see with the watercolor. Oh, I think it's that one. Yeah, the one on the right. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes the mantas get attacked by sharks, but usually they can heal their wings if they get attacked by a shark. So the skin can actually regenerate. So they have this amazing ability to actually heal really well from sharks. Okay. Oh, and there's this one. So this one has a little bit of fishing line and a hook stuck in it. So yeah. they do sometimes get hooks in them in the Maldives. And you got this one? Yeah. Ah, this is their reproductive organs so this one has claspers these two long lines coming yeah. up the bottom of its body and that means that it's a male manta whereas the other one is a female manta oh. and then we have the reproductive wounds that was really good that you spotted those the fish and the shark bite cool Ooh, yeah. okay Bonnie, we only have a few minutes left, so I thought if you have any other questions, maybe you can ask us some questions or yeah. we can just chat if you want to. Do you know how many species of coral there are in the world? Mm. Massive question. <laughs> I <can't> remember. <laughs> I should know, that's for certain. Um, I want to say like a thousand, but have to look it up, Bonnie. Do you want me to yeah. look it up? If you want. Yeah, I'll look it up for you. While okay. she's looking that up there, um, I'll actually tell you, did you know that um, in the Northern Hemisphere, we used to have similar uh, birds, seabirds, to penguins called <clears throat> great auks? Wow. And where I'm from in Ireland, um, Waterford, which is on the very south coast, uh, the last great auk, I uh, showed up and it's actually in Dublin in Trinity College now and you can go and see Ooh. him and uh, he actually died a very sad death uh, they, they fed him potatoes <laughs> as, as they would in Ireland and oh my gosh yeah he, he didn't last long <laughs> when was that how long ago I was in the 1800s so uh, yeah he's been there since he's actually a really good nick so oh, yeah cool. that's so, cool yeah no. So <laughs> there is 800 species of hard corals. So that's the corals that have the skeleton made of calcium carbonate, which you would think of. Oh. And then there's a few other species that are called soft corals and they are like a soft tissue that will wave a bit more in the water. Cool. Very good. Yeah. I'll find out of questions again. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> What, what's your plan when you grow up? What do you think you will, what, what's your dream marine biology job? Do you know? Well, either working at the poles or working in the tropics. It's really, really different, but I like both of them. So one of my dreams would be to study penguins at the South Pole and another would be to study um, like fish and sharks in the tropics. Mm. You could even do a bit yeah. of both, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You could do one in the summer and the other one in the winter. Yeah. yeah. Well, that'd be the dream. That would be so cool. Yeah. So it's really important that you just do as much volunteering as you can. Um, yeah. So you can put it on your CV when you're a bit older. And one of the biggest things I think is making connections, getting to know lots of different people. Um, 
and making them know who you are and that you're hardworking yeah. and friendly and ready to be there and help and very enthusiastic, which you are. So I think you'll do great. Yeah. <laughs> Go far. It says, it says we have less than a minute left. Yeah. yeah, I think we're just after run yeah. out of time here, guys. Although it's been great. Mm, yeah. Um, I'd like to thank both of you. This has been really, really good and very informative. And it's great to see someone so inquisitive and informative as well, especially at a young age like thank yourself. You. Yeah, you've got yeah. a great career ahead of you, Bunny. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, if you... Oh no, wait, one Flossie there. <laughs>